Naman Hussein faced a maximum of one and a third to four years in prison if convicted at trial. The 20 counts were concurrent in the eyes of the law because it was one event. Attorney Paul Darahanesian is here with us now, longtime prosecutor for 20 plus years. I'm going to ask you right off the top, if you were a prosecutor, knowing what you know about this case, would you have rolled the dice with a jury? I think different prosecutors have different risk tolerance levels. Given the facts of this case, it would have been the legal version of high-risk surgery, but there are prosecutors who engage in high-risk surgery. There's probably a prosecutor in this state that would have said, I want to try this case, but you have to understand it's going to drag out the process, and is that something the victims want or don't want? You've been in a room with victims who've, whom you've had to tell, we don't have enough here or we're not going to go to trial. How does that go? It's a very difficult discussion. I think you can feel the pain just listening to the reporting in this case, even though we weren't in the courtroom with cameras. And I think it's a very difficult challenge to face, but it happens and it happens all the time where victims will not get the justice that they're looking for in the criminal case. But the question is, is that what you should want? Do you think the criminal justice system can give you that satisfaction? I'm not convinced that it does for victims. From the defense's side, is this a big victory for them? when we know that he faces significant civil exposure as well? I think where it started, yes. When you look at where this looked like at the beginning. 20 counts, you hear it. And 20 deaths, 20 deaths. And you hear what he knew about. But then you found out later that there was an intervening act. And that's what Mr. Takapina was saying in his news conference. And that, the intervening acts involving Mavis, where he went to Mavis, and Mavis did not accurately report on invoices. For the prosecution, that was a body blow to their efforts to go to trial, I think. How important is it to the civil side of things for Naman Hussein to have said in court today, guilty, Your Honor? It's very important because it opens the door to his testimony and the civil cases going forward. Because he faced criminal prosecution, the civil cases get stayed. They're stopped. This allows them to go forward, but it also allows the civil plaintiffs to use him and try to use him to build their case against Mavis. We've heard a great deal about Mavis saying that they uh, did not fulfill their responsibility. In fact, they altered, according to the, the plea agreement today, they altered some of the documents, receipts, uh, which uh, Naman Hussein paid for the repair of this, this limousine. There are others, are there not? There are others who may face some responsibility. In fact, they were identified. The NTSB has, has mentioned right. state regulators in as well. Interesting, I think the NTSB did the defense a favor in this case because it identified the state of New York as not fulfilling their responsibilities in supervising not only the limousine operator, but also allowing Mavis to engage in this type of service. What would we expect from a sentencing, which we have learned will take place in two months because he was given an interim probation sentence initially, mm. or in two years rather, uh, two years of interim mm. probation, and then again, he'll come back in two years and will be sentenced according to the plea agreement, if he stays out of trouble, he will be sentenced then to three years. We've already seen victim impact statements mm -hmm. in an unusual move at a plea hearing. Very what, will unusual. We, what will we see at a sentencing? Very unusual to do, to do at this point. There's many unusual aspects, seeing this written plea agreement of six pages trying to explain what happened, hearing victims at this point. But again, the judge heard it. I don't think you're going to see anything new and different at the time of sentencing unless the defendant does not fulfill his conditions. And I think the reason they're doing that is to keep more control, more of a leverage over him until he faces the actual sentence. Paul Darahanessian, thank you very much.